Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India talking about the normal shocks and um, we just started deriving the normal shock relation and uh, what we obtained finally in the last lecture is that the Prandtl relation which is uh, pro which provides the relationship between ester and the um, uh, velocities between upstream and the downstream. So, this uh, Prandtl relations that we obtained this is what um, we can see the proof of it. So, that is um, now let us say what we have is that uh, from here what we have is that gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma u 1 u 2 u 2 minus u 1 a star square plus gamma minus 2 gamma u 2 minus u 1 which is u 2 minus u 1. So, now we divide u 2 minus u 1 and what we get is that gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma u 1 u 2 a star square plus gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma equals to 1. So, even doing bit of little bit more math what we get gamma plus 1 by u 1 u 2 a star square 2 gamma minus gamma plus 1 which is gamma plus 1. So, once that cancels we get a star 1 is u 1 u 2. So, this is what you get. Now, if you solve for the a star then that can gives us like a star equals to u 1 u 2. So, what we can do u 1 by a star u 2 by a star which is 1 and that provides our m 1 star into m 2 star is 1 which means m 2 star is 1 by m 1 star. So, if the flow ahead of shock is supersonic that means, m 1 greater than 1 which means m 1 star greater than 1 then from this m 2 and m 1 star relationship from this one we can say thus we will have shock behind uh, the flow field behind the shock where m star would be less than 1. So, if m star is less than 1 that uh, means the m 2 would be less than 1. So, which proves that hence m behind shock wave is always subsonic. Okay. So, this is behind normal shock because this relationship is for uh, uh, normal shock relationship. Now, further one can extend this what we got from let us say equation 13 what we do 
or can write m2 m square equals to 2 by gamma plus 1 by m star square minus gamma minus 1. So, from here what we get m star square equals to gamma plus 1 2 plus gamma minus 1 m square. Okay. So, we can again see this is equation 20. So, what we have is m 2 star equals to 1 by m 1 star. Now, we put equation 20 here what we get gamma plus 1 m 2 square by 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 2 square equals to gamma plus 1 m 1 square 2 plus gamma minus 1 minus 1. Now, if we solve for m 2 that yields m 2 square is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 which is m 1 square minus gamma minus 1 by 2. So, this is what we get. So, let us say if m 1 is 1 that means, it is sonic then m 2 would be 1. So, this is something you can say this is infinitely weak normal shock which is sort of defined as Mach wave. If m 1 greater than 1, then the normal shock becomes stronger and m 2 becomes less than 1. However, m 1 if it tends to infinity, m 2 tends to some finite minimum value which is gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma. So, that is comes around 0 0.378 for year. So, these are the different relationship that one can obtain. Now, again from equation 14, we get rho 2 by rho 1 is u 1 by u 2, which is u 1 square by u 1 u 2, which gives us u 1 square a star square that would be m star square. So, that provides the relationship like rho 2 by rho 1 is u 1 by u 2 is gamma plus 1 m 1 square 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square. So, 
we get an uh, the relationship between the density across the normal shock. So, same thing one can obtain for the pressure uh, let us say P 2 minus P 1 which is rho 1 u 1 by 2 which one can write rho 1 u 1 square 1 by u 2 by u 1. So, u 1 square is gamma p 1 by rho 1. So, that is allow to write 1 minus u 2 by u 1. Now, since this has a ratio of the velocity from equation 21, if we use uh, value of u 1 by u 2, we get p 2 minus p 1 by p 1 gamma m 1 square 1 minus 2 plus gamma minus 1 m 1 square gamma plus 1 m 1 square. So, P 2 by P 1 is 1 plus 2 gamma uh, gamma plus 1 m 1 square minus 1. Okay. So, that is the uh, relationship between the pressure ratio across the normal shock. And the other way the T 2 by T 1 is P 2 by P 1 into rho 1 by rho 2 H 1 by H 2 1 plus 2 gamma 1 into gamma plus 1 m 1 square. So, when m tends to infinity, m 2 would be gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma which is 0 0.378 or P 2 by P 1 would be gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 which is 6 rho 2 by rho 1 would be infinity T 2 by T 1 is also infinity. So, now using the second law of thermodynamics what we can write using second law of thermodynamics what we can write S 2 minus S 1 C P L n T 2 by T 1 minus R L n P 2 by P 1. So, this is what we have already derived. Now, the S 2 minus S 1 is greater than 0. Now, so what we can do? let us say if T 2 equals to T 1 and P 2 equals to P 1 then this becomes 0, but for m equals to 1 S 2 minus S 1 equals to 0, but for m 1 greater than 1 S 2 minus S 1 greater than 0 
m 1 less than 1 also s 2 minus s 1 less than 0. So, this is an impossible situation. Why? Now, another situations since m 1 greater than equals to 1, which means m 2 has to be less than equals to 1. So, rho 2 by rho 1 greater than equals to 1, p 2 by p 1 greater than equals to 1, t 2 by t 1 greater than equals to 1 u 1 by u 2 greater than equals to 1. So, u 2 by u 1 less than equals to 1. So, which clearly means pressure, density and temperature they increases across the shock wave and velocity actually and Mach number decreases across the shock wave. Okay. So, that is what happens when you have a normal shock. Now, we look at the change in stagnation properties. So, we have a normal shock here. So, let us say we have a fluid particle like this, so that has been m 1 greater than 1. So, m 1 and p 1 and t 1 and S 1, this is an imaginary place, let us say state 1 A, where the fluid element has been brought to rest isentropically. Now, m 2 less than 1 here with the fluid particles. So, this is m 2 p 2 t 2 s 2 stagnation for 2 to 2 a which is p naught 2. So, this would be P naught 1, T naught 1, S 1, P naught 2, T naught 2, S 2. Now, from energy equation, what we can write that is equation 4, using equation 4, we write C P T 1 plus U 1 square by 2 is C p t 2 plus e 2 square by 2. For 1 goes to 1 a that means, the fluid particle from here this was brought to rest which is a sort of an imaginary point isentropically the then this would be C p t 1 equals to C p t naught 1. Similarly, for 2 to 2 a C p t 2 is C p t naught 2. Okay. Now, C p t naught 1 is C p t naught 2. So, that means, what we get the stagnation temperature, stagnation temperature remains 
constant across a stationary normal shock wave in a calorically perfect gas it is cp is c that means now this is very important that we say it's a stationary normal shock wave because if the normal shock wave is moving then this condition may not be valid so when the shock wave is stationary and it's a normal shock wave then the stagnation temperature across the normal shock wave remains constant in general is the stagnation enthalpy is constant enthalpy is constant across a stationary normal shock okay now for chemically re, uh, reacting gases if there is a chemical reaction then t not 1 would not be t not 2 since cp is not constant anymore now consider the changes between the imaginary state so considering the changes between the image imaginary states 1a and 2a s 2a minus s 1a which is ln minus r by p 1 a and what we have s 2 a is s 2 s 1 a is s 1 t 2 a is t 1 a equals to t naught and p 2 a is p naught 2 p 1 a is p naught 1 so what we get s 2 minus s 1 minus r ln p 2 by p naught 1. So, what we could write p naught 2 by p naught 1 is s 2 minus s 1 by r. So, that is what you get for stagnation pressure ratio relationship. Since S 2 minus S 1 greater than 0, P naught 2 by P naught 1 would be less than 1, which clearly means then the total pressure or stagnation pressure decreases across a normal shock. Now, we can get the density to rho naught is P naught by R T naught. So, what we can write rho dot 2 by rho naught 1 p naught 2 by p naught uh, p naught 2 by t naught 2 into t naught 1 by p naught 2 so, p naught 1 which is since the stagnation temperature is same this will become p naught 2 by p naught 1 which is also less than 1 that means the stagnation density is also so is rho not 1 that means across normal shock 
stagnation pressure and density decreases. Whereas, stagnation temperature remains constant. Okay. So, what we had is that fluid particles from here. So, this has gone to state 2 a and this has gone to 1 a. So, this is 1, this is 2 for adiabatic 1 d flow we can again write C p T 1 plus U 1 square by 2 is C p T 2 plus E 2 square by 2, which will get us C p T 1 plus C p T naught 1 and C p T 2 plus C p T naught 2. In C p T naught 1 equals to C p T naught 2, T naught 1 equals to T naught 2, since C p is constant. And again we can write the change in entropy, which is delta S, uh, let us say S 2 minus S 1 C p ln T 2 by T 1 or P 2 by P 1. So, the delta S is 0, which is C p T ln T 2 by T 2 equals to R ln P not 2 by P not 1. So, we convert things in the terms of stagnation condition. So, what we get ln P not 2 by P not 1 would be 0, which means P not 2 by P not 1 is 1, that is P not 2 is P not 1. So, from perfect gas law, what it gets P naught equals to rho r T naught. So, that means rho naught is P naught r T naught which is constant. So, this brings to a very important uh, conclusion that for isentropic flow P naught, T naught, rho naught are constant everywhere in the flow. So, which means whenever you have an isentropic flow, your stagnation properties remains constant everywhere, but whenever you have a stationary normal shock just uh, again I am reiterating that it is a stationary normal shock, then your stagnation density, stagnation pressure that decreases, but stagnation st temperature only remains constant and across a uh, normal shock density increases, I mean static density increases static pressure increases, static temperature increases, whereas the flow velocity uh, decreases in the downstream of the shock. So, that is uh, pretty much what uh, we wanted to talk about uh, in uh, normal shock relations. So, what we will do 
we will just um, uh, talk about uh, the oblique shock and other stuff in the next lecture. We will stop about this here today.